Hey everyone, this is Baylor from Scooby Dooby Doo on YouTube, and in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to write a PHP class. So you may have heard that there's a thing called object-oriented programming, and it, it's kind of strange and it's kind of weird to get used to, and there are a lot of kind of reasons behind it that I, I have that you have to realize I've never had a PHP. Well, actually, I had a friend give me. I've never read a PHP book. Let me do it like that. Um. So I really don't know enough about – I don't know like all the terms and stuff. But I, the way I do object-oriented programming is basically what you have is an object, and you can give stuff to that object. Now, I know that's kind of like, well, duh, that's object-oriented code. Um, what I mean is just like – Normally, what you would do is you, would, if you once you know how to write functions, you just write a ton of functions, and you would say, well, these go to a user, okay? And you would just write all these. You'd create like a file, and you'd say, this are user functions, and you'd have all these functions like get username by ID and things like that. Well, that really needs to be put into a class because you're writing, you're working with an object, and this object is a user. And that user has different things. He has a username. He has an ID. He has an email address. These are all just out of the hat right off the top of my head right now. But you get the general idea that we're working with an object. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's create a class. So a class is written very easily. It's a class just like that. And uh, what we'll do is after that, we declare what our class name is. Okay, so here we'll call this our user. Let's do it like that. Okay, now this is case sensitive, by the way. Okay, so let's just call it user. Let's just do it under lowercase. Um, okay, so now we have our class, and we've actually specified this class, and it's kind of similar to a function. Inside this class, you can declare, you can declare variables and functions, and you can do different things with that class. Now, classes get really advanced and complicated, so this will probably be two or three videos long. Um, so I can kind of break up the different parts of classes, but let's go ahead and initialize this class. So right now this class won't do anything, but we're going to initialize that class by coming down here and we're going to say our user. Now this doesn't, this variable does not have to be the same name. I can call this Bob if I wanted to. Okay. So no worries. You don't have to try to uh, use the same variable, the class name here. So once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to say our user is equal to a new user. Okay? So here you can say we're saying a new user. User here is this class name. Now, if I made that a capital U, then I had to make a capital U here. Okay? So with that already, we have created a class, and we initialize this class. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to store a variable in this class. Okay, so let's create a variable in a class. You use a variable like this. You'd say var, and here you would create your variable name. So let's create ours as username. Okay, so this is going to be our user's username. And we're going to make that equal to Baylor. Actually, I think I do this most of the time when I get the chance. Okay, so that's my username, Baylor Ray. And what I can do is I can actually get that username. And the way you do that is you'd come down and we're going to echo out. Now we want to get the username from our username class or our user class. So what we're going to do is we have this instance of our user. So we're going to say we want to echo our user. Now notice this little arrow and that's where we're actually getting something inside this class and we want to get the username variable. Okay, so here you can see we have a user, we're calling this variable, and here with this username, we're actually calling this username here. So when I reload, what I'm going to get is my username here. Okay, so that should be pretty simple to follow. Basically, this is just what you, what I, you can call that as a dot, so user dot username. I don't know what, to, I don't really know the best way to call that. Okay, so let's create a function for our user. So what I want to be able to do, now usernames, we can keep this here. You, classes have a thing called a constructor function. Okay, so a constructor function is, I'm just going to run this little keyboard shortcut that I have here. But basically what you do is you create, you write your normal function syntax here. So function, give it a function name. Now the function name has to be underscore underscore construct. 
okay just like that and you might if you're using a web ide or an editor that has syntax highlighting like this where everything has its own individual color so you can kind of look at it and know what you're doing it should have its own custom color okay now if you want to learn more about these functions and stuff it's called like a magic function or whatever you just go to php.net and search for class and you can get a list of um, special functions that you can do there are different functions and I'll probably talk about them in this video so you can get a better understanding of a class okay so with this constructor function what it's gonna do is it's automatically gonna run okay so when I say new user it's gonna run this function so we can here say echo hello world and let's get down and get rid of this echo and when I reload you can see we get hello world so you can see that it ran this function now let's go ahead and make it where when we create a new user we want to give a username so in our function we're gonna say this has a username and this username is required so we can't make it equal to null or whatever and up here where we have our variable that's just gonna be a variable like this now we don't have to give it a value because it's just a variable that's gonna be a placeholder okay so let's go ahead and come down here and what we're gonna say is when we run this function we wanna make this username equal to the username supplied here okay so they're kind of it's going to be kind of confusing but you'll see the way we target this username here is we're going to have to get call our class and the way we do that is we say this okay so when you you can only use this variable the <laughs> you can only use the variable that I have selected this um inside of a class okay you can't use it outside of a class and basically what it's doing is it's calling our user or this class so in this case it's calling our user class and we can do similar things that we did down here we're gonna call the username so we'll say user name okay so here we're saying this which is referring to our class and we're saying we want to get the username so it's calling this username variable and we're gonna say this is equal to username okay so this is kind of confusing basically so here I showed you that we're calling this username variable and we're saying it's equal to the username that you pass to the constructor function okay now the way you actually run the constructor function is you just you just add your parentheses here and here I'm gonna do my Baylor Ray again and we'll go ahead and echo out that username when I come over here and reload you can say I get Baylor Ray okay so let's actually create a another variable we'll call this second variable we'll call that um, name okay so if you had some type of user system on your website, you would probably want to have um, a name and username, things like that, that just kind of set that person to have his own profile or whatever. So let's go ahead and make a function that we can make this, give this a value, okay? So let's create a function down here. So here you can see I'm just writing a normal function, and I'm going to call this function set um, value. Okay, and we're going to say we want to get a the um, the type or the don't really know. Let's just call it type. Okay, and type is going to be equal to name or username. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say switch, and I'm going to say switch to the type. And uh, yeah, we'll just do this, and then I'll show you another way you could do this. Um, we're going to have a case, and we're going to say case name we'll make this name equal to oh we also set uh, that doesn't need to be here um, we'll go ahead and set type equal to and we'll also have a value okay so we'll say this name is equal to value and we could do this for our username as well okay but I'm not going to do it because it just takes a long time so basically we've created this function it's called set value we have a type and we have a value and what we're doing is saying we're switching through the type and we're looking for name. And when we find name, what we're going to do is make this name equal to value. So we're actually going to give this variable a value. So if I say I want to echo out name, let's just reload. We don't get anything on our page. But if I run user set value, I want to set it for my name and I'll make this equal to Baylor Ray. Okay, and if I come back over here and reload, see now I have my name and I can even call my username. 
okay so you can see that we're easily able to set a value and we're also able to uh, call that value as well now this is one method that I've done but right now that's kind of strange you know um, so what I want to do it well it's not strange but it takes a lot of work like if I came over here and I create a new variable months down the road I said oh I also have an email address okay or email address I know people are like dude Baylor you're not saying it right well I don't really care um, as long as you know what I'm saying um, then that's fine with me okay so we have an email address and uh, what we're going to do is much down the road we forget to add our case for the email like I forget to say case email okay so later down the road I can't change that so what we need to do is we need to find a way to easily um, set this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say now you we're gonna say this now we're gonna call that variable type inside of this and we're gonna say it's equal to value okay so what are we doing here because that's kind of strange basically you know this is what you need to remember when you're calling a variable okay when I'm calling a variable inside of my class I do not have to add the dollar sign I just have to call the name of it so if, or that, these are my my vocabulary isn't working very well with this class if I don't have to call the name of the variable so I don't have to say I, I only have to say email I don't have to add the dollar sign as you see down here I don't say name like that so what we're doing here is we're saying type so in this case type is equal to name so it's gonna put name right here okay it's not so we're able to actually make a quick shortcut so we can set set value name equal to Baylor Ray like that okay so it's gonna take this type it's gonna make this name equal to Baylor Ray so if I come down here and reload again you can see we still get that same Baylor Ray and I can duplicate this and I can say email and let's do Baylor at example.com and I reload and you don't see anything because I didn't echo that out but we'll say echo email and I reload and you see we get Baylor at example.com so now I can easily and quickly set values okay so I just wanted to show you that that you can actually call each part of a of a um, class by just running adult a variable okay and you can do that with variables but it's like it's kind of strange like you can I'm not going to talk about it um, but you can actually create somewhat dynamic variables um, but I won't talk about that right now but if you want to know what that is and you don't know what I'm talking about basically you can say dollar dollar like that variable equal to hello world okay and if I had a variable called var equals um, name okay basically what this would do is it would create a variable called name equals hello okay so that's what I'm talking about there um, because we have this variable it's equal to name and then we're not we're not creating a variable here we're actually we're creating a variable with this variables text okay value so we're saying basically we're writing name like that but we're actually using a variable very complicated um, it took me a while to understand that but hopefully I didn't just confuse you and throw you off for a big loop and you actually understand what I'm talking about but that's what I call like a dynamic variable okay but that's not what it would really be um, with PHP okay so the next thing that I want to show you is uh, I've actually unless sh I showed you you can run your function I didn't really explain that I created a function in here inside this class okay so we're inside the class I created a function and I can run that function by calling my instance of the class so here I have that instance and stored in user so I can say user and then set like here down here run a variable so I say like email well I can actually run set value too okay so that's how you run a function and you can't run the constructor function so the next thing I want to show you are public and private now those are the two really common ones that I use all the time and I'm going to explain it. Basically, what we can do is we can say set value is a public. I don't know why I did that, but we'll just come back over here. We'll say our function set value. So this function is a public function. Okay. 
What that's going to tell PHP is that you can actually run this function outside of the class. So that means I can do this. So if I reload, nothing changes. But if I say set value is a private function, and I reload, you're going to see I can't call that private method or, or function. Okay, that is that is not allowed. Okay, kind of. Uh, I'll I'll, get, I'll touch on that in a second. But let's leave it private right now. You can see that I cannot call this. So let's just comment that out and get rid of it. But what I can do, okay, is inside of my class, okay, because it's private, that means I can only call that function if I'm inside the class, okay? So you notice that when I set it to private, outside of the class where I had this instance, I wasn't allowed to do it. I got this error here, okay? But when I'm inside the class, I can do something like this. I could say this set value username equal to the username. Okay, so here I'm just kind of recreating, rewriting this. And instead of writing username here, I'm actually putting inside this, I'm just writing the set value function I explained earlier. So if I come back over here and reload, let's echo out our username here. See, we get Baylor Ray. And that's because PHP, when you write a private function, you're only allowed to write it inside of the class, okay? You're not allowed to write a private call, a private function outside of the class. So that way you can create functions that aren't really important to the class, um, but they do, they would, they're something that you write a lot, so they're kind of important for the class, but they're not really needed or intended to be used outside of the class. So you can create private functions like that, okay? So I think that's a lot in this video. If you have any questions, because this is kind of complicated stuff that we're getting into, if you have any questions, just kind of tell me, hey, I have a question at t this time in the video when you were talking about this or whatever. Could you explain that better? And hey, I'll help you. No worries. Because um, I really enjoy doing this. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, like I said, you can leave it in the comment section below this video. And goodbye.